something to do with the analyzer you picked up from the vault. See what happens if you use it. You. You who hears me, eons after my time. I have set these words down, even as my mind fractures under the weight of what I have done. Find my words and remember their truths in my place, for I am the one who put the Destroyer in its chains. I am the one who murdered the Iridians. I am Myriad. Crimson Raiders to the bridge. The Destroyer, a practical name for an incomprehensible evil. Surely it has had millions of names more poetic or subtle. But none of the civilizations who coined them survived to pass them on, or anything else for that matter. Only the Destroyer itself knows for sure how long it has been tearing through the universe, eating its own name. You're dealing with a siren! I do not know how the Iridians became aware of the Destroyer. They never spoke of a time before it. But I suspect that they went searching for it, or something like it. And for their curiosity, they were rewarded with doom. Crystals. Let's see how the crystals resonate. The Destroyer is ever hungry. Perhaps that is obvious when regarding a horror that gnaws on the edges of galaxies. But its appetite only grew as it ate the stars, never stopping even to swallow. It was an impossible task, the scope unthinkable, the cost of failure too great. Still, they worked diligently, even as stars in the sky above them began to wink out.
The prison known as Pandora is the most incredible cage ever constructed. An unbreakable lock meant to hold an unceasing evil for all eternity. Even for the Iridians, whose reach could pluck stars from across the void, it was the work of centuries. The momentous task of caging the Destroyer was made all the more difficult by its intelligence. It understands the beings it consumes, and the cultures it dissolves. To trick such a being required a great sacrifice, a lure. Millions of lives that entered Pandora ahead of its captive, tempting it further inward. I can only hope they were already dead when I closed the gate behind it. All prisoners must be fed, even the Destroyer. The Iridians devised of a feeding slot that calls wayward souls to open it every 200 years. A cruel surprise for those that open this false vault. But in exchange, the small morsel will keep the Destroyer sedate over the eons. In any case, the victims will not be in pain for long. Pandora's upper mantle is made of solid iridium. It is this shell that now holds the destroyer tightly in its bonds. The pressures and energies at work beneath the surface of the planet are titanic in scale. If the cycle is disrupted in any way, it is entirely possible that the iridium will force its way to the surface. I fear such a thing might attract the wrong kind of attention. Not all shared the desperate optimism of the Iridians. There were some who hoped to appease the Destroyer and save their own souls by attacking the yet unfinished Pandora. They were met by another of the Iridians' creations, the Warrior. Though their coup was obliterated, the Warrior now sleeps in its own vault, ready to defend it from any who would further trespass against it. Secrets, Crystal.
The Iridians knew of the flaw in their design. The cost of putting the Destroyer in its chains meant that there was no one left to throw away the key. All they could do was disguise it. And so it will forever hang in the sky. A small, cold, tidally locked moon. Unremarkable even to the dwellers on the surface of the planet. What is the Destroyer? It is a mouth with endless appetite. It is hate that never cools. It is the long shadow cast by our universe against the moldering sun of time. It will never truly be contained. Merely made to wait until its chains slip. Or are slipped for it. I am a Siren. Like the Destroyer, my kind has been called by many names. Oracle, Angel, Witch. Rarely are the names used kindly. I used to hate the ones who feared us, believing them ignorant. I think now, after what I have done, I better understand. I have never known a time without my sisters. Even when one passes and a new siren receives her markings, she always finds her way to the sisterhood. It seemed the will of the universe that sirens be together, our lives entwined like an unseen braid. Sirens have been hunted for as long as they have existed. Hunted out of fear, out of jealousy, out of misguided greed. The Sisterhood was our way of passing down the craft of staying hidden, and staying alive when hiding was no longer an option. No thread is ever truly cut. It can be tied to another, whether knotted by careful fingers or tangled by chance. Every siren must decide what will happen when the thread reaches its end. <laughs>
To inherit a siren's gift is also to inherit her curse. This is the choice of a siren presented with death. Pass on the gift and burden someone worthy, or release it and burden an unknown soul who has no idea that the entire universe is about to want them dead. found me, and my sisters tried to fight them off. But I stopped them. I saw what lay behind their open hands. I knew that anyone who would ask for my help was already lost. As the Siren Sisterhood, we were the keepers of many answers, but our own nature remained elusive. We never knew our origins, nor our purpose. In this way, we are still undeniably mortal. I do not believe the Oridians intended the Guardians to be their heirs. Though they are technological marvels, they were held back from true emergence. Kept in the dark to be of greater use. I wonder if they resent their creators for it. Even the sharpest knife is still a simple tool. The Iridians left their mark on countless worlds, but few of their creations are as uncanny as the Guardians. They are quasi-life, a half-truth, driven by instructions they only partially understand. They are hardly the ideal custodians one would choose to guard the leashed terrors of the universe. But in their resolute perfection, they at least mirror their creators. Always useful! The vaults operate as self-contained prisons. The Guardians have no need to serve as jailkeepers, only as sentinels at the walls. Why then bring them so close to consciousness? What purpose has a thinking spear? What will happen, I wonder, when all the vaults are empty and all the terrors dead? 
Will the Guardians still stand their vigil? Will they find a greater purpose? And what is stopping them from finding it now? I suspect that some Guardians are keener than others. I have seen them acting of their own accord and even heard them speak. What spark do they have that the others lack? Was it freely given or stolen like the fire of the gods? Resonate with me. <laughs> The soul of a guardian is little more than data to be transferred from one shell to another. I have never seen where they reside if not in their physical bodies, and I suspect I never will. A soldier who cannot be killed in their sleep is a dangerous one. Since the Guardians are not bound to individual bodies, it is nearly impossible to know how many the Iridians might have made. An uncountable army, hidden below the surfaces of a hundred worlds. We are fortunate that they rarely stray far from their wards. I have seen Guardians change their own bodies, lengthening their blades or strengthening their armor as they require. I wonder how far they might change themselves now, in the absence of their makers. We once lived side by side with the Iridians, though already forgetting has begun. There was no fear of one another, only awe on one side, and a kind of sadness on the other. They never said if they knew their fate before it fell, but they also never said any of us had a choice. 
The Iridians were neither gods nor demons. They were simply a people whose abilities outpaced their needs. So, in their curiosity, broke down walls that should have stayed up. They were, perhaps, fated to be erased at their own behest. Like the forest that grows so that it may burn. I may be the last to ever learn the Iridian language from one of their own. I have so many questions I should have asked them while I had the chance. Like why the Iridian term for homeworld also means first landing. Here that I killed them. A billion lives to power a machine. Should it comfort me that they will thrum in its heart forever? Perhaps oblivion would have been kinder. It would have been for me, at least. Are you alright? Wonder what it says. How does one end a